Stephen Jones joining you now here on your home of the Cowboys 105 through the fan as we continue our football Friday discussion here on the fan. And uh, good afternoon, Stephen. How the heck are you? Doing good, guys. Ready to uh, ready to get back out on the field after a long, long bye week situation. So uh, ready to get back to work. Yeah, jump it in uh, against the 49ers. Recent history, long-term history against that organization. How much would you love to get a win against this team? Oh well, it'd mean a lot, as we all know. We, you know, we've been struggling and hadn't played uh, up to the standard that uh, you know we'd like to think we are as a team. But uh, you know, just like uh, the Niners are experiencing, and a lot, a lot of teams experience, we've had our share of injuries, but. The world's smallest violin. No one feels sorry for you in this league. So we're ready to get out there, and it'd be a huge, huge win uh, to be able to go out to San Francisco and and get that job done. Now, uh, speaking of getting that job done, there's there's been talk uh, today with uh, Mike McCarthy saying Dalvin Cook is ready, but didn't confirm to him him playing. Said he wanted the whole week. What would you add to that? Yeah, I don't have a lot to add to it. I know they're going to make that call tomorrow. And uh, certainly Dalvin's been doing, doing the job and doing his work week in and week out like the professional he is. I know, you know one of the reasons we signed him is them. I had him in Minnesota, and he was one of his leaders uh, on his team when he was having success. And uh, they were winning playoff games up in Minnesota. He was one of the leaders on their team. So he's been great to have on the team. And, you know, Mike and Shadi have been talking, talking to us about uh, – you know, it's about time for him to get his opportunity, and uh, we'll see how everything goes tomorrow and make that call. How's Deron Bland looking? Uh, any new news on him possibly playing Sunday? Yeah, he's still got a shot. Uh, he's, he's working through it. We don't want to have any setbacks with him uh, in terms of that foot, but, uh, you know, he's doing a good job. He obviously plays a position, you know, where everything, you know, <laughs> it's all got to work because you're playing against uh, – you know, top-notch players, and, you know, who knows, we might, might end up seeing Debo Samuels yet. And uh, I know we won't see Ayuk or McCaffrey, but, you know, you got to be at the top of your game when you're out there on an island at corner and got to make sure he's 100% before we, can, uh, before we can get him out there. So we'll see how his practice goes tomorrow as well. How about Tyler Guyton? Do uh, you imagine he starts at left tackle? Yeah, he should be right back in the lineup playing left tackle for us and get Tyler back where he's playing his best ball at, uh, at guard there and, uh, you know, keep the train moving there. We thank the world of Tyler and know he's got a bright future in this league. If you look back on what Tyler Smith did as a rookie, uh, you know, he had his ups and downs too. But uh, it all came together for him, and he's one of the best linemen in the league now. So it'd be great to uh, get Tyler back rolling uh, this week and uh, obviously he'll have his hands full with that minor defense but uh, be good to have him back hey Steven if you could give me a little latitude on my question here I, I did work in the pro personnel department for you so I kind of understand this a little bit but I wanted to ask about uh, about Derrick Henry and it and, it, and I, I want to ask this in a way of does you know we talked about the salary cap situation I feel like a lot of teams missed on him could this have been the decision you guys made about him more about that, that you didn't feel like that he could play anymore and it was, you know, and yeah, he moved first, on from it that way? No. This was, uh, you know, we know his agent well. It happens to be Todd France, Dax agent. Sure, sure. And, yeah, uh, I, I, you, know, you have a history there. I'm not going to get into who, who talked to who and who said what. But, sure. you know, this was strictly Brian and allocation, you know, of, of our okay. cap. And okay. people have to make tough decisions and, you know, you know, I like to, you know, liken it to, uh, you know, somebody, uh, you know, Kansas City has to make tough calls along the way yeah. and let great players move on because of cap allocation. And, you know, we just didn't, we don't have that, you know, right. in our plan right now. And, yeah. hey, you always, you remember this well, Brian, a, a man had a real hell of a coach come through our doors. Sure. And, and he always said, I reserve the right to change my mind. So, right. you know, right. we'll continue to. Uh, look at our situation and how we're managing it. And, you know, this was just a situation where we weren't going to spend significant dollars uh, sure. at the running back position. We were obviously trying to draft one, didn't fall right in the draft. And, 
uh, you know, a little bit. And I think, you know, Mike would be the first to say we just, we got to, you know, commit to that run. And, you know, unfortunately, we've been in a lot of games where we've been behind. We had a tight one in Pittsburgh and uh, we ran the ball in the second half and ran it well. So it's just uh, getting out there and getting with it. But this, the Derrick Henry deal, I totally understand it. He's an amazing football player. He's having a hell of a season and can understand the second guessing. We just, uh, you know, made a conscious decision that we weren't. And, of course, we had Tony Pollard right there who, you know, we talked the world of. And, uh, you know, just, you know, he knew that we weren't going to, you know, be spending significant dollars at the running back position. Yeah, I I mean, I totally, I get, I really do appreciate your answer because I know there's a lot of teams that missed him. And And I know myself missing him and thinking about, you know, what he could potentially do. And I just wondered if it was we made the decision because we felt like that his ability didn't match what we could afford. That's that's where I was. No, just, it in was, my uh, mind, I was tr- it's trying to clear that an up. allocation of uh, cap okay. dollars. But you know, the Cowboys, Brian, you know this better than anybody. I don't know if y'all right. remember a player, Randy Moss. And, yeah. Uh, we took Greg what Ellis at the eighth hole, and I think Randy went like twenty fourth. And I yeah. think we were the only team to pass on him, uh, right. according to most people. That we <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, him. I was in Philadelphia. Ran, there were about yeah, yeah, I was in Philadelphia. Passed on yeah. him too. Yeah, I was there too. Yeah, I was with you. Yeah. I was with so, you. Uh, we, we got to read that one all the time too and understand, <laughs> you know, Derek working in yeah. Dallas and, you know, and him obviously making it well known that, you know, he was a, you know, a Cowboy fan, which that's outstanding. But uh, some of these players are only fans up to a certain amount of money and they got to yeah. make a business decision. Do you feel like he probably wouldn't have been the the same pr- producing type of back that he is with the Ravens right now? With with you just with never know. Every situation's different. Players thrive in some systems and don't do as well in others. Obviously, that Ravens, uh, what they're doing with the Ravens, hats off to them. We got a big dose of them right there in Dallas, and yeah. you know they're just a hell of a football team right now, and they're playing at a high level. They got a quarterback who's playing at the MVP level, and obviously. Part of his deal is he runs the ball. There's a real threat as a runner, not just a thrower. And, you know, it seems like that system's uh, making a lot of sense. And uh, hats off to the Ravens. They made some great decisions there. Uh, Stephen Jones here with you on the fan. You know we love and appreciate having you and uh, Jerry on twice weekly here. And, and boy, did, did Jerry really get after us last week or what? Did you hear about that? <laughs> I, I might have heard a little bit about it. <laughs> he's got he's got more skins on the wall. He's an 81 year old Hall of Famer who's done really well. So you won't you won't get that from me. I I don't have enough skins on the wall. Oh shoot, I I don't know, man. I was just wondering if you could tell me your strategy for for uh, getting out of it when you get sideways with Dad there. Hey, I've I I know I know it, but that's not what y'all are paid to do. Y'all are paid to talk and have opinions. <laughs> I know when I've, I've seen that jaw lock up, and my strategy is to keep quiet when he's rolling. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, uh, do you envision yourself taking over as a general manager one day? You know, that's a, I don't think about that. I want to enjoy every moment with my father. Uh, you know, he's the owner and the president and the GM, and, uh, you know, I cherish every minute that I've gotten to work with my father. A lot of people don't get that opportunity. Uh, I cherish the opportunity, and, you know, I, I want to be where my feet are. It's a whole saying Dak likes yep. to use, uh, enjoy what you're doing at the moment. And, uh, you know, we'll cross that road one day. Uh, uh, you know, no one's getting out of, out of here alive last I checked. And uh, so, you know, at some point that may be the case, but, uh, you know, we'll worry about those things when they happen. I just want to enjoy working with him and being a part of something special and, you know, I know right now we're frustrated with uh, how our team's competing on the field, but uh, overall it's been a, you know, we've had a hell of a run and think we've got a lot left in us. Stephen, uh, and again, working with you guys, I always found that you and your father were very good listeners. Uh, were you listening this week in the bye week with what Mike McCarthy was talking about potentially for the second half for you guys uh, as far as maybe some of the adjustments that he was going to make and did yourself make any suggestions? You guys have seen a lot of football, know a lot of football. Were there any suggestions that you made that maybe some things as the front office that you would like to see? You know, that's, you know, I, sometimes I get a laugh out of how people think, uh, you know, it's a, 
a dictatorship over there and everybody right. just does what Jerry says. As you said, Jerry is a great listener and we yeah. are. And, you know, we've got two really great coaches on our staff who've got, uh, you know, skins on the walls as head coaches and have had a lot of success in this league. And Mike McCarthy and Mike Zimmer, their staffs are great. And uh, then we've got some, you know, really top end football players like that Prescott and CD Lamb. And I know Mike is hurt right now. Uh, Zach Martin, you know, we've got the right kind of people, uh, you know, to get this ship right. And uh, obviously when you have a bye week, you, you do a lot of self-critiquing and self-evaluating. And I know uh, both Mikes have done that in terms of offense and defense. And, uh, you know, I just feel like uh, we've got the right group to right this ship. I know obviously, uh, you know, again, uh, using, I'm going to Bill Parcells a couple of times here. But you are what you are, and right now we're a three and three average football team. Three, you know, fifty percent average, and that's not our expectations around here. And uh, you know, certainly uh, our goals are much higher than that. And uh, I just think we got the right coaching staff and the right group of players to, uh, you know, get the ship righted here and make a hell of a run. Sounds good to me, Stephen. Give them hell out there. We'll be pulling for you. Appreciate you guys. Always enjoy being on.